Welcome, welcome, amigos. Hello, friends. Hi, good evening. Good evening, sir. Welcome to class. We are week three, day number three. Woohoo! How is everybody doing? How are you guys doing? Everybody good? Thumbs up? La manita, creo que se pone la manita abajo. No reaction. Thumbs up. Yay. I see that Angel's over here. Angel, are you there? Can you hear me okay? Yeah, yeah, sir. Oh, fantastic. Yeah, I can hear you. Excuse me, because I, I, I was on mute. I'm no. talking, but I don't see what I missed. Don't worry, don't worry, don't worry, Angel. Alex, welcome aboard, Savior. Tocayo, Tocayo Roberto. <clears throat> Bienvenidos. Welcome, welcome. Busy Wednesday, we're going to call it today. Busy oh, Wednesday. Really? We're going to practice a little bit. Angel, we're going to practice. Yeah, yeah. Today we're going to have... In wait. fact, I, I ended the, all the, the platform today. Oh, really? That's that's nice. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. All right, we can, we can do a quick review of the platform, too. Let me, see, let me bring yeah. it up. Let me put it up. Only here a problem in, in when write the sentences. I don't know why always I have the same problem. Uh, with the data and sometimes with, with the interrogative signal. <laughs> okay, yeah, you know, but but I want you to know, Angel, that sometimes it is not you with the problem. It is the platform. Um, I had a few cases where even though the answer was correct, in the platform, it still came out wrong. Joe, yeah. Joe Perez, hello, hello, my friend, welcome. <clears throat> welcome, Jose, welcome, Mike, welcome, Kenya, hello. Okay, let me see here. So don't worry about that, Angel. Yeah. We can always review it. Yeah, yeah. Only I left uh, one that time. I try, I try. Uh, I stay there in like uh, one hour and a half. Oh, my goodness. This. Oh, my yeah. goodness. Okay, yeah. That's, that's <laughs> because long... I wrote, I wrote in different ways and, and different forms and yeah. always, always was wrong. But uh, uh, the final, I... I find it the way. <laughs> okay, good. Good to hear. Good to hear. All right, everybody. Welcome aboard. Welcome to class. Uh, Doble Tocayo, Roberto Ezeu. Welcome, welcome. Well, ahí estaba Roberto now. He's gone. So. But igual, igual. Le dimos la bienvenida. Igual. We gave him the, the welcome aboard. Um, let me see. Busy, busy day Wednesday. Eh, no sé si ustedes han escuchado el term hump. Day. Have you guys ever heard of that? What? Hump. Como la joroba. Hump. De, yeah, hump day. La joroba del camino. Oh, uh, hump day. Okay. Yeah. So they call yeah. it they call it the hump day porque eh, you know por, yo me imagino que por la joroba y un camello. Usualmente they usually they usually have a camel. So whenever you see a meme for uh, Wednesday, hump day is el día de la semana. It's, it's in the, the middle of the week and it feels the heaviest, right? Because, you know, it's about to be yeah. the next one. So, all right, we're going to get started. And what I want to discuss is, let me show you guys here. Let me go ahead and share my screen. <clears throat> let me go ahead and share it. Okay, so here we are. And, and we're actually taking our time with section four. Yeah. The reason we're taking our time is because, as you guys can see, it has pronunciation, it has conversation, um, it has a couple of exercises. So today we are going to go back into pronunciation and actually we're going to take pretty much the whole hour. And we're going to leave conditional sentences with if for tomorrow and also to complete whatever exercises we need for section four. And then that way, Next week, 
we can focus on section number five, which is our last section here. Okay. Okay. And as you guys can see, I've been working on section four, right? Todos los chequecitos que me salen. And I also have some activities for us today. And so the first activity that we start off with that I, that we incorporated was the reading. And this one, I want us to do it a little bit different. I, we're going to do it. I'm going to read the story to you guys. And then I'm going to ask you guys the question. So this, this one has two things. <coughs> you, can, you can follow along with reading and you can listen. And so we are working out the reading or fast reading. We are working out the listening. And then once we put those together, we're going to work on the comprehension. Okay? All right. So here we go. We're starting. Reading. A lion. Tired from chasing his prey, lay sleeping under a nice shady tree. Some mice scrambling over him while he slept awoke him. The lion was upset and lay in his paw on one of the mice. The mouse begged for mercy so sadly that the lion let him go. A few days later, the same lion found himself caught in a hunter's net. He could not get loose. He roared in anger. The mouse whose life he had saved heard this and came. How could a little mouse help a big, strong lion? His sharp little teeth chewed through the ropes and soon the lion was free. All right, that's the story. I'm sticking to it. And now let's go back to the lion and the mouse. All right. So based on the story, okay, here we go. Here comes the question, guys. The lion was tired from chasing yeah. the prey. What does prey mean? B. Letter B. Letter B. The animals he tries to catch and eat. Let's see. Oh, yeah. That's it. Okay. Moving to the next one. The mice went to sleep under a... Tree under a tree. All right. Go, 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 he, Eli, he, 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 he went to sleep under a tree. All right. While he slept, what animal scrambled over him? The mice. The mice, right? It wasn't cockroaches, it wasn't spiders, mice. Ratoncitos chiquitos. Mouse. There we go, correct. The lion laid his paw on a poor mouse. What is a paw? A lion's foot, tail, or rock? A lion's foot. A lion's foot. Yeah, that's it. You got it. Well done. The mouse begged. What did he beg for? Letter B. Letter B. For mercy. Piedad. Por favor, piedad. Mercy, mercy. Okay. A few days later, the lion was... Letter C. Letter C. Caught in the hunter's trap and unable to get out. There we go. Go to seven. When he heard the lion roar, the mouse that the lion had let go came to help. How could a mouse help? Letter C. Letter C. He could chew the rope and let the lion go free. That is correct. And number eight, the lesson is that we should not look down on. Letter C. Letter C. Friends who do not seem foreign and strong. There we go. 100% on this one, guys. Well done. And I like this story 
a lot. Um, you know, there's many instances where we're doing really good. And so what it's telling you, or the point of the story, cuando estés arriba, <laughs> perdón, don't look down upon, you know, in this case, a friend that might not seem in, in important, right? Because you never know when that could switch over and you might need that friend to save you. You know, who knows, man? You know, hay que llamarle al machete para que te salve. Entonces, that's the point of the story. I really like this story, by the way, guys. All right, so let me go ahead and move away from this one. And let's go to our PPT. All right, so now with, with the presentation, guys. This one, uh, it's a little bit long in terms of presentation, but that's in, turn, in, terms of, in, turn, in terms of the slides, but it's only because it has a lot of information for the exercises, okay? So don't get scared with this one. We were talking about pronunciation. Remember, it was three things. When we talk about pronunciation, what did they include? Do you guys remember three things? What were they? What were those three things? Okay. Three, three things. Cuando hablamos de pronunciation, we need to do these three things in order to have correct pronunciation. So now, ¿Ya tienen uno en la pantalla? Yeah. That's one. Intonation. That's Intonation. one. Correct. Okay. What's another one? Do you guys remember? Yes. Rhythm. 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 And I'm sorry. I'm sorry, ma'am. I heard you say... ¿Qué dijo? ¿Qué dijo? Intonation. Rhythm. 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 Okay. We have rhythm, intonation, and then there was a third one. Stress. What, which one? I'm sorry. Maybe stress. Oh, well, yeah. Stress. Now, now, I think stress falls, people will say that stress falls into intonation and rhythm. Okay. Let's go, let's go back here a little bit. Let's go back here because we just saw that. Very good, very good. Here it is, here it is. Ah, you got it. There it is. Right. So now, yeah. we had looked at rhythm. Do you guys remember what rhythm was? It was, it was that little beat right um okay. cuando alguien en español nosotros decimos ah es que él tiene flow what does it mean you know what does that mean what does that mean you know for you to have flow what does it mean well it means that you have the correct speed that you have the correct cadence that you have the correct rhythm so when you guys hear people say oh okay, yo tengo yo tengo más flow que tú that usually means that they have a, you know, a, a better understanding of speed and rhythm in general. Okay. All right. So we covered the portion for rhythm. And one of the important things with rhythm was, you know, there was content words and there were function words. And then, so the content words were usually not the loudest. However, I'm sorry, al revés. The function words were usually not the, the loudest. The content words were the loudest, right? So when you started off a sentence, you would start off with, I bought a car on Tuesday. Now, it sounds a little bit weird because I'm really exaggerating. But when you guys are talking, that is what, that is what people want to hear, right? They want to hear that little cadence. They want to hear the speed. They want you to have that rhythm. Now in conjunction with so you use rhythm now we're going to focus on intonation how does it sound 
Does it sound happy? Does it sound sad? How does it sound? And so that's what we're covering here. And so what is intonation? Intonation is a variation of the spoken pitch, el volumen, right? El volumen and how your voice is coming out. That is not used to distinguish words. Instead, it is used for a range of functions, such as indicating the attitude, emotions, and feelings. All right? So intonation focuses on the pitch and the tone. Okay. When do we use these? All right. So we use rising and falling intonations depending on what we're going to talk about. Rising intonation is used when the sentence is answerable by a yes or no. So if you're asking a question, it should be in a rising tone, right? Is your shirt black? And then so once again, I'm exaggerating a little bit. I don't want you guys to sound that way, but that's the way it would sound if we're really using the, you know, the intonation the, the proper way. Uh, what is your shirt black? Right, and then the, the last color is because you are waiting for an answer. Now we use the falling intonation, and this is the this one is used in the most common types of intonation in English. It is used in statements, um, a declarative sentence, special questions, commands, uh, exclamatory sentences, and in the first part of disjunctive questions or parts of alternative questions. So I was telling you guys that we have three, three different types when it comes to intonation. We have sentences with rising, we have sentences with falling, and then we have sentences that have both. So that is three different types, okay? And so we're gonna focus on uh, rising intonation. Now, the rising intonation is a pattern in which our voice rises to a high pitch by the end of the thought group or a statement. We use the rising intonation in the following situations. Sentences ending with please, for goodbye or thank you, when used to show gratitude for a simple matter. A cup of tea, please. And then ahí va para arriba, va. A cup of tea, please. Y ahí sube el volumen. Would you pass me my bag, please? Y sube. Right. And, and as you guys can see, yo subo también, va, cuando digo. So it's rising intonation. Okay. Then we have falling intonation. And this is a pattern in which our voice falls to a low pitch by the end of a thought group or statement. And so now we use falling intonations in the following cases. When we're, when we're uh, saying a command, when we are using an exclamation, for example, leave me alone, and then baja, leave me alone, right? Give me my keys, y baja de volumen. Leave me alone, y baja. Give me my keys, y baja. Is everybody okay so far with the rising and the falling? Yeah, everybody, everybody good? Yeah. Okay, all right, so now, in other words, what, what the hell does that mean, right? That's, that's what you guys are probably saying to yourself. What, what does it mean to up or down? Ah, teacher, yo, yo no me voy a estar parando en una conversación acá rato, bajando. Well, you don't have to, right? Remember that it's just your voice. And the only reason I'm telling you guys to either stand up or go down is so that you guys can see when it's rising and when it's falling. But in a normal conversation, you don't move your head, right? The only thing that moves is your voice. And so the pattern of the rises and the falls in pitch uh, is a device that we use to indicate a meaning. So if you are bored, for example, um, if you are sad, for example, if you are happy, if you are excited, this is the emotional meaning that you guys are using in these sentences. It is a tool to indicate the feeling. 
Is everybody good so far? Is everybody okay? Okay. Okay. So think of intonation, rhythm, and stress as a tool. Now, specifically, intonation is a tool to help you with the meaning or the feeling. Ay, que esa canción sí que tiene feeling. ¿Qué significa eso? What does that mean? Well, sentimiento. Eh, there we go, right? Ay, que se canta con un gran feeling. <laughs> All right, let's do it. And some of the best singers can really do that, right? Some of the best artists out there. Okay. So, why do we talk to you guys about intonation well there is an awareness in communication you have to let the other person know with your sentence what the feeling is what is the meaning of what you guys are trying to say and if you guys use the wrong intonation it can cause a misunderstanding For example, are you guys happy, right? And then you guys, you guys go, uh, see, teacher, um, uh, yeah, we're happy, right? What, what just happened there? Even though you are saying that you're happy, your words and your sentence, they are not pushing the idea across. So then, you know, I might come back and say, well, you know, he's lying to me. So I'm going to try to push him a little bit more, right? So that's usually what happens. Now, a lot of people say that the most important portion of a sentence is the word choice. Remember that word is important. However, how you say it is also very important. And in some cases, how you say it might be a little bit more important. So keep that in mind as well. All right, so since we're talking about feeling, va. A ver, metámosle un poquito, met, metámosle un poquito de feeling a esto. Okay. Okay. So let's say, let's say, Angel, now, now, uh, uh, ya que te tengo aquí, ya que te tengo ahí con yeah, tu yeah, mic. Sure. Mira, mira, this is what we're going to do, Angel. I want you to think of a place, let me see. Oh, I know the perfect place. Mm -hmm. Angel, you just went to the movies. You went yeah. to the you went to the cinema and you were watching a movie. Yeah. You have been in the movie theaters for three hours, Angel. So well. Andas en moto. La película termina. You put your gloves on, you grab your helmet, you are walking out of the movie yeah. theater, y está lloviendo. Ahora, oh my God. espérame, espérame, espérame. Yo voy a la par tuya, <laughs> y vamos a andar en la moto juntos. Okay. Pero, 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 tú vas primero. Ahora, mm. you have to tell me está lloviendo. You have to tell me that it is raining. But I want you yeah, to tell okay. me in a surprise. Tres horas en el movie theater, todo bien bonito cuando entraste y ahorita que va saliendo, surprise, Angel. It's surprise. Ra it's, it's raining. <laughs> it's raining. Va, va. Ahora, I want you to it's tell raining. me, I want you to tell me in a surprise way that it is raining. ¿Estás listo? Ok, great. Okay. Acuérdate Acorda, la gran película que te acabo de pintar. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, of course. All right. All right, all right, let's do it, Angel, let's do it. All right, so okay. we're walking, we're walking. You're, you're a little bit ahead of me, ok? Ok. All right. What do you like of the movie? <laughs> ready, ready. A ver, dale, go, Angel. Right. Ok. Uh, In this moment, we are, we are out and, well, it's raining. Outside, it's raining outside. It, it's raining? <laughs> it's raining. 
Oh man, okay, <laughs> all right. So now, now we have to figure out how we're gonna get on the motorcycle, right? If it's raining, that's gonna make it a little bit uncomfortable. Yeah. Okay, hold it, hold it right there. Yeah. All right. So. For the reason I don't like the motorcycles. <laughs> right, right, right. Okay, okay. It's so, raining. There we go. It's raining. Oh my God, it's raining. Right. It's raining, but but there's a little bit of feeling though. There's a certain feeling that we have to put it, that we have to put in. Okay. It. Oh my God. Oh no. Oh, buddy, it's raining, right? So there's a little bit of a, of a song there. Hold it, Angel, hold it. A ver, next one, next one. Yeah. Okay, next one. La primera fue una surprise. I think somebody said it. Ah, oh, it's raining. Es como una exclamación. Somebody yeah. somebody just mentioned that it was like a little, ah, oh, it's raining. Oh, right? Now, that one was a surprise. How would that sound if we're talking about annoyance? Si me molesta la lluvia. O sea, yo, yo, soy, yo soy cafecito y con el agua me derrito. Entonces, no me gusta el agua, no me gusta la, la lluvia. ¿Cómo le podemos decir para dejarle saber a alguien que me molesta la lluvia? Uh, it's raining. Oh, there we go. Okay, that one worked out. <laughs> All right. Ah, it's raining. Pero, pero escuchan como toma un, un bajón. Se escucha como... Yeah, oh, yeah. It's raining, man. Entonces se escucha como un, como un pujidito que uno hace. Okay. All right. But what, what if, what if, imagine, imagine. Imagine que no ha llovido en seis meses. In so many days. In well. so many days. Oh, my goodness. It has been raining in such a long time. Y ahora está lloviendo. Y es un tormentón. How would you guys say that? Oh, wow, it's raining. It's, ra it's <laughs> raining. <laughs> oh, Alex, oh, Alex, Xavier, it's raining. Right? Now. So it goes for like. Yeah, me, it's, meaning. It's similar, it's similar like, a, like a surprise because. Well. Uh, the depend is lucky or no. Okay, yes, it's a surprise which could be neutral or a surprise which could be good, right? Yeah. Good and fantastic. Yeah, it's raining. Como es la canción? It's raining. Hallelujah. It's raining, man. El otro sería, oh man, it's raining. El otro sería, oh, oh, it's raining. I, you know. Eh, ¿Cómo se llama el del, el del TCS que siempre dice va a llover y nunca llueve? El Moisés Torbido. El Moisés. There we go. All right. So, so look, look, guys. It's the same thing. If you read it, so look, if you read it normally, it's the same. It is raining. It is raining. It is raining. It doesn't really, you know, it's the same thing. It doesn't change. But depending on what feeling you put into it, depending on the intonation that you put, then it could change to surprise, to annoyance, or to just a great feeling. So, with that in mind, this is what I want you guys to think about. Okay. Okay. Everything, everything is in the oh. Right, right. So, so here we go, guys, guys. We're going to say goodbye. And I want you guys to picture it, right? Picture it. Have you guys had a family member come to visit you that you had not seen in a really long time? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. 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 We have a yes. Now, it could be from another city, right? Yo vivo en San Salvador y mi familia vive en San Miguel. And, you know, not too many people like to travel like that. Right? So sometimes they stay away for a long time. Also, they could be coming in from another country, from Europe, from the United States. Okay? Pasan contigo, you know, a month or two weeks. And then after the two weeks, they tell you they have to leave. I want you yeah. to imagine that you're taking a member of your family to the airport and you are going to say goodbye. How would you say it? I mean, Sí. Y en brasileiro. A ver. Yeah. 
¿Quién, <risa> ¿quién, quién quiere practicar? <risa> <laughs> ¿Quién quiere practicar saying goodbye to a family member? How would you say it? Who wants to say it? For example, when I say goodbye mm -hmm. in the airport, when somebody goes to the out of the country, mm -hmm. goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs> a, little, a, little, a little sad. We're, we're, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, so we're usually sad, right? Okay. You're, the family member's leaving, and, and so you're saying goodbye. Okay, and then so the, most of the time you're sad. And then, you know, you, you do the handshake, you give the person a hug, and then you start, you know, with your goodbye, goodbye. Uh, well, in my case would be uh, Tia Chavez, right? <coughs> goodbye, Tia Chavez, oh, we're gonna miss you, goodbye, have a, bye. But usually it has that tone of sadness, okay? What about if you have to say goodbye to somebody who was messing with you? and you were just fed up with them. How would that goodbye sound like? Ya no lo aguantas hasta aquí, ve. Dijo que se iba a quedar un mes y por el COVID-19 se quedó seis meses. Y hasta aquí, ve, la tía, ve, hasta aquí. How would you say goodbye? Are you happy that I say goodbye? No, no, digo que... Ay, no, se cuida, okay, okay. All right. All right, so I want you guys to think of it that way. All right, next one. How about when you see somebody for the first time and you tell them, how are you? How do you say it to someone that you haven't seen for 20 years? How do we start that conversation? With a great, how are you? It's just, it's just a, it's just a normal. Hey, how are you? Right. Usually, if we haven't seen somebody in 20 years, we also follow it up with, "Oh my God, you look a little bit different." Right. Some people get shorter. Some people look taller. Some people get a little bit chubbier. Some people get skinnier. So we usually follow it like that. There's usually a little bit of excitement. How about to somebody that lost a member of a family? How do you say, how are you? To somebody that lost a family member? The sad feeling. It's a little bit, right? It's a little bit sad. It's sad. So it's, a, it's more like, hey, how are you? You know, how's everybody doing? And then we usually follow it with like a second question for everybody else. Okay. How about to somebody that's in the hospital? Have you guys had any family members in the hospital? Yes. Okay. How do you ask them? Do you ask this question? Do you guys say, how are you? How do you ask it? How did you ask it when you did? A little bit worried. The, what happened to me, I went to see a friend and I was a little bit worried for them. And so usually we say, hey man, how are you? You know, are you okay? Is it COVID-19? Is it dicen que si va? Salis corriendo. A echarte la botellita de vodka para curarte. Entonces, okay. So why are we talking about how are you? Why are we talking about goodbye? Why are we talking about statements of, you know, it's the same thing, but different meaning. Um, goodbye can be said in many different ways. Si alguien te cae mal, el goodbye va a salir diferente. Si alguien te cae bien, el goodbye te sale diferente. Ah, si estás enamorado de alguien, ese goodbye se oye muy diferente. Si alguien te cae bien, el how are you. Te sale muy bien. Si alguien te cae mal, ese how are you se escucha y se puede ver. Right? Si estás enamorado de alguien otra vez, ese how are you se escucha también with a lot of, you know, worry in your voice. All right. So, now that we have that, who wants to practice a quick little role play? Yay! Yo, teacher, yo, yo. There, there we go. Thank you, thank you. And, Okay, 
So this is what we're going to do. You can be the girl <laughs> and I will be the boy. And this is a normal, normal conversation. Okay. Okay. All right. All right. Are you ready? Are you ready? Yes. Okay. Hey, um, are you busy tonight? Not really. Why? Well, I was thinking of going to a movie. Great. Let's go. All right. You see, you see. Okay. Okay. Now, what did you guys hear in that conversation? Information. <laughs> okay. Okay. And, and what did that information tell you about this conversation? Um, if you are talking about a question, if you are agree with that. Okay. All right. And, and you have, you have the, 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 the questions that we asked, right? Are you busy tonight? Not really, or no, or yes. And then the follow-up question was why? Well, I was thinking of going to a movie. Great, let's go, right? And then so this has a lot to do with being happy. Did you guys get the feeling that these two people were happy? Yeah. All right, all right. So now we're gonna we're gonna do it one more time. We're gonna do it one more time. Um, Mariana, but this time, right, there's no feeling involved. We're just gonna it's just we're gonna we're gonna put no intonation whatsoever. Try to read it as flat as possible. Okay? All right, let's go. Um, are you busy tonight? Not really. Why? I was thinking of going to a movie. Right, let's go. Okay. Now that one sounded a little bit different, right? How does this one sound? Yes. Go there. This one sounded like if we were reading something. I see that? Now, usually the conversation has a lot to do with the type of intonation that you guys are going to use. So, for example, you can go to the doctor. You can go to the, let's say, the hospital. And the conversation that you have with your doctor more than likely will not be the happiest if you are sick, right? So your tone, your intonation has to match whatever it is that you're doing. So in this particular role play, I'm asking someone to go to the movies with me, right? So I cannot sound boring. I cannot sound sad because nobody wants to be with somebody who's sad or boring. And so you have to put a little bit more beat to it. Hey, are you busy tonight? Not really. Why? Well, I was thinking of going to a movie. Great. Let's go. Right. And it is really happy, really, you know, uh, I want to say, I want to say really good tone with the conversation itself. All right. So what do I have to do? Well, in some of these cases, are you busy tonight? What do you guys hear there? Is that falling or is that rising? Are you busy tonight? Are you Sounds busy like tonight? It's growing. It, it, like, it, rising. like we're rising. Okay. Rising. Okay. Are rising. you busy tonight? Okay. Not really. And then this one is flat. Why? Right? And then it starts off again. I, and it's high, was thinking of going to a movie. And then it goes back down. So this one has an example of rising and then falling. Well, I was thinking of going to a movie. And then it falls. And then we go back to great. Let's go. And you guys see how it's up and down. So let's talk about that. Let's talk about what can I use to make that sound a little bit better in terms of falling intonation or rising intonation. Okay. Remember, 
if you guys are making a statement, you guys are gonna start high and then you're gonna drop the volume. You guys are gonna start high and then you just drop the bass. Try that. Nice to meet you. Comienza alto y baja de una sola vez. Hey, nice to meet you. And then it drops. I'll be back in a minute. She doesn't live here anymore. Dad wants to change his car. Here is the weather forecast. Cloudy weather is expected at the end of the week. We should work together more often. I'm going for a walk in the park. These are all statements. And the last word will drop in volume. Okay, who wants to read these statements to me? You have to read all of them. And you guys have to remember that at the last word, you have to drop your volume a little bit. Who wants to try? Is that you, Alex? Yes, sir. I hear you, brother. I hear you, brother. All right, Alex. <laughs> Let's go. Okay. Let's try it out. These are statements. Remember, statements, and then the last word, you lower your volume a little bit. All right, let's try it out. Okay. Nice to meet you. We'll be back in a minute. She, she doesn't live here anymore. Dad wants to change his car. Here's the weather forecast. The weather is expected at the end of the week. Work in. I'm, I'm going for a walk in the park. All right. So I'm going kind of for a walk in the park, right? It's a little, a little flat, Alex, but don't worry about it, right? Remember, remember that there's different techniques that we can incorporate and we can use. Uh, not not everybody can can start off with a really high voice, so don't 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 worry about that stuff. But what you have to remember is that mm -hmm. you can be flat in all of these, and then then the last word, a little bit lower in volume, and you got it. Okay. Plus, it's a statement, so you know most people won't even catch it. But I want you to know that it's there. Mm -hmm. Nice to meet you right nice to meet you and then you you drop that okay when you give a command write your name here write your name here show me what you've written leave it on the desk take that picture down you know you hear people say take that picture down take that picture down throw that out Put your books on the table. Take your hands out your pockets. Another exercise that you can do is you can do the word and then lower the volume on the letters. So you can say, write your name here. And then you drop the volume on the word itself. And you, you can start off with the A and the E and then drop it. You know, write your name here. All right. Somebody else? Anybody else want to try? Any 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 other volunteers? Yeah, me. All right. All right. Let's try it. Let me see. Let me let me put you on here. I want to make sure that everybody. And so I'm gonna mute everybody, and then you unmute yourself. Okay, here we go. Okay, we're set. All right, let's go with commands. Okay. Oh, I, I can start right now, right? Yeah, you can start. Yeah, go, go ahead, Greta. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Write your name here. You got it, Greta. Good way Show to go. me what you're writing. Okay. R Leave it on the desk. But, uh, Pyramid yes. grid. All right. So with this one, it is written. You can say written. 
written. Yeah, there you go. Hacerme un favor, can you do it one more time? Show me what you, you have written. You got it, okay. And uh, there again, sign beginner. Teacher. Yeah, yeah, I'm sorry. From, from where? <laughs> A ver, dale, leave it, leave it. Continue ahí, with leave it. Ah, yeah, okay. Leave it on the desk. Take that picture down. Throw that cut. Put your books on the table. Take your hands out your pockets. Okay, all right. So th this was an example. Now, it was a little bit easier for you, Gretel, because naturally you have a high-pitched voice. And so- but I did try it. Right, so it, it, I can, you can hear it. You can hear when you start off with write your name and then when it drops in the here. So that was, that was a very good example. Okay, now, the other way, well, there, there's, actually, there's actually about five different categories of it dropping, right? So when you ask a question with WH, for example, what country do you come from? And then you drop the volume, right? From. What country do you come from? And then you drop it. Now, one, once again, I'm exaggerating a little bit, but that's how you should be saying it. So what, what country do you come from, right? And then it drops a little bit in volume. Um, you could say that you start high and then you end it at a slightly lower volume in order to make the falling intonation work. Where do you work? Which of them do you prefer? When does the shop open? Right? And then so those are the specific. Now, falling into nations is actually used pretty common right, in a lot of the things that we do. Rising into nations, right? This one only has some specifics. Uh, when you have a yes or no question, or when you have like a question tag, and, and we're actually gonna practice one of those. So, rising intonation, yes or no, right? Do you like your new teacher? So I see that. Do you like your new teacher? Have you finished already? May I borrow your dictionary? Do you have any magazines? Do you sell stamps? La última palabra, se le sube el volumen. So instead of dropping the volume, you turn the volume up. All right, who wants to practice this one? Why Can I try? Yeah, is that, is that Carla? Yes. Yes, Carla, okay, let's go. Let's In the first one. Let's do it, let's try it, do the first one. Espérate, ¿cuál, cuál? Espera, 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 espera. Do you wanna try, do you mean this one with the falling intonation or do you wanna practice? Uh, that's okay, whatever. This one, okay, so let's practice this one. Rising intonation. Acordate, teacher. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Do you like your new teacher? Have you finished already? May I borrow your dictionary? Do you have any magazine? Do you sell stamps? All right, so this is a good example of speed, cadence, and then, ladies and gentlemen, the word, right? Do you like your new teacher? Do you like your new teacher? Have you finished already? May I borrow your dictionary? Do you have any magazines? Do you sell stamps? Right? Now, so, so here's another key piece of information. Whenever you guys are, are talking about pronunciation, the speed and cadence, you are supposed to match the person that you are speaking with. So if your friend speaks slow, you should also uh, you should also slow down a little bit. If your friend is speaking and he's, you know, he's, he's talking very fast, then you should speed up to match his speed. Um, do, you guys, do you guys get that? So if you, have, if you have a friend that's talking really fast because you, you know, he talks really fast as a teacher, blah, 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 blah. so what you are going to try to do is you're gonna have to try to match my speed. Now, if you have a friend that talks really slow and that likes to explain things like this, and you talk really fast, then you're gonna have to bring it down a little bit, okay? So that, that's another strategy that we use also when, when we're having a conversation. We try to match 
the speed in which the person is, is, is the speed that the person is talking in. All right, so that a good example. Thank you, thank you, Carla. Okay, the questions with tags. Esta es, uh, for example, I, I want to say that it, it's the question, and then you answer, right? It, so it's like uh, I don't want to say it's a rhetorical question because a rhetorical question there's no answer to it, right? Sino que se queda se queda uno callado se puede decir. But this one here is called the question tag because you follow it up with a little question. So, for example, for example, um, Alex, um, we've met already, haven't we? Y luego, y luego you would answer with either a yes or a no. No, no, we haven't met. You know, so esto se llama una question tag. We say a statement and then we ask a quick question, right? We've met all, we met yeah. already. Haven't we, Angel? Yeah, uh, just uh, in, in question text, we have to make a pause because and later say the answer. Well, for example. Yeah. yes, sir. Because as you can see, there's like a little, there's a little comma. So, so we go like this, Angel. We do, we do it like this, um, Angel. Okay. We've met already, haven't we? Pero, pero uh, no. no. Right, right, exactly. There it is. You got it. So, so the idea is, no te quedes callado por mucho tiempo. Porque lo que no quieres es que alguien conteste antes de que vos digas, haven't we? Because then it's going gonna, it's gonna to yeah. seem really weird, right? So it's, we've met already. Haven't we? But ahí lo tiran de un solo, haven't we? And then the other person is going to answer. So remember, these are called question tags. Y se pueden ocupar, por ejemplo, cuando estás comiendo. Um, you like fish, don't you? Y la persona te dice, yeah, yeah, I like fish. Okay. Oh, you're the new student, aren't you? Y vos le decís, no, we've, we've been coming to class for three years. You know, I, we've had the same class <laughs> for three years. I'm not new. Okay, so those are examples. These are the examples of rising intonation. Okay? Remember, yes or no question and the question tag. We've met already. Y, y el volumen. Haven't we? We've met already, haven't we? Right? Yeah, I started, I started rising. Okay. Now we go to the rise and fall. Remember, we talked about this really briefly. Okay. So when do we use both in a sentence? When we are providing choices. Cuando tú le dices a alguien, are you having soup? Right? And then the volume comes up. And then it drops or salad for the second item. Siempre. Siempre. Right? It is not, it's not the other way around because it sounds weird. Are you having soup or salad? <laughs> right? No, it, it sounds kind of weird. So are you having soup or salad? Is John leaving on Thursday or Friday? Does he speak German or French? Is your name Ava? or Eva, right? And then so it's it's high and then it drops. Okay, who would like to practice high and dropping for choices? Volunteers, volunteers, volunteers. Me, teacher. Okay, let's go, Gretel. <laughs> let's go, Gretel, let's see, let's try it. Dele. So Choice. the first. Mm -hmm. Okay. Are you having soup or sal salad? A ver, a ver, espera, Gretel. <laughs> soup. Oh, say, uh, say, that, say that one more time. Soup. Soup. Okay, and now salad. Salad. There we go. You got it. There we go. A ver, do it one more time. Can you please do it one okay. more time? Are you having soup or salad? Well done. Well done. All right, let's go with the next one. Is, is John leaving on Thursday or Friday? Okay, there we go. Let's go with the third one. Does he speak German or French? Well done. Okay, so for this one here is does. Does. I see. Does he speak? Does he speak? 
you got it. Okay, there we go. Let's go to the let's go to the last one. Um, how do you pronounce Ava? You can say Ava. Eva. Mm -hmm. And in the second. Eva. 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 Um, Eva. Yeah. Okay. Is your name Eva or Eva? Okay. Oh. Eva. 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 Yeah. Okay. Remember that. Remember that the E is, is really pronounced. When the C, yes, se, se escucha bastante. So you have to say Eva. Eva or Eva. There we go. There we go. All right. So so these are these are the examples, right? And now you guys will also see these when there's a list. And I think we talked about this one, right? For example, I went to the market and I got apples pears, bananas, and oranges. And it drops completely at the end, like ultimo. Because usually the first item that we mention is something we really wanted. We've got apples, pears, bananas, and oranges. The sweater comes in blue, white, pink, and black. I like football, tennis, basketball, and volleyball. The last one has the drop. I bought a t-shirt a skirt and a handbag, and then dive the very end. If you are doing conditional sentences, it also, uh, you do uh, the up and down, rising and falling. If he calls, ask him to leave a message, and then baja de volume. If he calls, right, if he calls, ask him to leave a message. Ye el unfinished thought. So, for example, you say something like, do you like my new handbag? Well, the, you know, and then you start off with, well, you know, the leather is nice. Well, the leather is nice, but I don't like it. Right? So these are the examples. Okay. So I think, I think we're pretty much set here. Um, tomorrow when we start class, we are going to practice some of these and we're going to practice with, you know, actually going with the, you know, with a little beat and seeing how we can get these more fluently. All right. And practicing those in our class. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I want to give you guys a little bit of your time back and I think that's pretty much it. Do you guys have any questions? No, teacher. Thank you. No, sir. Fantastic. Thank you. Thank you very much. Hey, yes, take it yes, easy. Sir. Have a good night. See you guys tomorrow. Have a nice everyone. Yes, good night. Good night, everyone. Good night, good night everybody. Good night, class. Good night. Good night.